God, and they're living out there and seeing, and they're sitting there thinking, well, if he's doing this and he's going to heaven, I can do it too. And you're all leading, leading them right into the pit of hell. A sinner cannot lead a sinner to heaven. It cannot be done. A sinner trying to lead a sinner to heaven would be like a blind man leading the blind. Will they not both fall into a ditch? We've got to get the sin issue out of our lives, y'all. It's got to go. It's what we're here for, isn't it? Revival. Let's get this out of our lives. This is a very powerful message. You're not going to get this message probably across the TV. You're probably not going to hear this out there in one of them big gigantic churches. Y'all, they're going to give you a little tickling in their message. They're going to come and pat you. If you'll just say this in a prayer for me, you're on your way to heaven. You're good to go. That's what they're going to give you. I'm going to give you truth. I'm going to give you truth. Go back to Romans chapter 7. Right, we stop in verse 4. It says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Jesus said he came not to destroy the law but through him the law might be fulfilled. We too, every one of you here, you too, the righteousness of the law must be fulfilled in you. Must be fulfilled in you. It's not impossible, y'all. It's not impossible. It is apart from God. It's impossible. It's apart, apart from God, it's impossible to fulfill, the, you know, fulfill God's righteousness. But with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. It's possible to go and see no more with Jesus Christ in life. It's possible. Do you believe? If you believe, all things are possible to you. Believe? Do you believe? I hope you believe, because if you don't, you're unbelief. It's going to hinder God's work in your life. You're unbelief. It's going to destroy you. Gotta believe in it. Gotta believe in it. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, that is to be fleshly minded, and thinking of the things of the flesh and, and continuing in those things is it's death and that's not just the death of this flesh this flesh is going to die but that's the death of your eternal spirit man. the death of your eternal spirit it's very powerful because the moral of the carnal mind is in, 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 enmity enmity can anybody pronounce that in, enmity against God it means hate the carnal mind is a hatred against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be so then that they, are, they, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you're not in the flesh. If you're not in the flesh, if so be the Spirit of God dwelling. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. I love this verse here, verse 11. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you. He that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body, this fleshly body. This old flesh, this old fleshly body. The spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead abide in you and he lives in you. Guess what? He can cause this fleshly body to line up with God's word and to walk it out. And to walk it out. That's the spirit of God. That's how powerful he is. That's what the Spirit of God can do for you. He can cause you to walk in his life and be victorious in every single thing, in every situation, every day in Christ Jesus. Every temptation that comes your way, every fiery furnace that you step through, you can go right through it without even the smell of smoke on you in Christ Jesus. That's the power of God. The power of God to take someone like me, an old wretched man. They had a needle in my arm for over 10 years. It was out here in this park, right out here. Right in here, even right here at this table, in that table, and all of them down through their hands. And turn it around to get up and preach the gospel to you. That's the power of God, man. That's the power of God. Man, you know, nobody else can do that. Nobody else can do that. 
Not to make it real. Not to make it real. Y'all ain't getting it, are you? Y'all getting it? Yes. Y'all are quiet. <laughs> Remember now, I'm a, I'm a symbol Baptocostal here, man. Y'all better get live up here, man. Amen! <laughs> I'm not here about no denomination, man. I'm not here about no denomination. I'm about I'm here about for whosoever will. My Bible, my Bible doesn't say anything about the Baptist going to heaven. My, my, my Bible doesn't say anything about the Pentecost. It's not about the descendants of God. It's not about the Catholics of the Church of Christ. Whosoever will. Not here. Whosoever will. Who's the one who wants to follow Christ? Who wants to get rid of that sin issue? Come on, man. I'm giving you, I'm giving you some good stuff. I'm giving you some good stuff. But the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, well, in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead, shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in him. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. See, when Christ comes in and he frees us from this thing, we're not to use our freedom for occasion to the flesh. We've been set free for his glory. Some of us have been set free, but we go back into the flesh. We're not to give occasion to the flesh. You know what I'm saying? Some of us get set free of things, and that's a little uncomfortable. I'm not used to that. I ain't never done that. I did it. I did it. I know. I know, bro. I know how many times I do it. Come on, man, tell me. I'm not ashamed, man. I tell I, I tell her, hey, I've done dope. I've, I've done it all. <laughs> you know, and I come out. I'm not ashamed because I know that when I'm confessing on my sins, it closes the door in Satan's face. He can no longer use it against me. And it opens the door wide open for God to come into my life. And these things are made manifest. When, 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 it, when it's made manifest, the light's brought into me. But when it's hidden under the carpet, it stays in darkness. I'm going to give y'all a chance. I'm going to give everybody here a chance. In a minute, we're going to call our prayer team again. And you're going to get a chance to come up here to our prayer team, our prayer members. We've been praying over these. We've been praying over one another. We've been confessional to one another. We've been meeting each other almost, well, every day this last week, but, but every Tuesday and Wednesday now for a few weeks, and we've been doing this very thing, confessing our faults to one another and praying for one another and getting victory in these areas. And you're going to do the same. You're going to get that same opportunity. Don't lie to one another. You are a body. Don't lie to one another. Be confessional, man. I tell you, man, it gets it out. Throw it out there on the table. And get rid of it. Let God deal with it and remove it from you. And be free. And be free. I got up 16 months ago, 17, 18. It was about two months after when the Holy Spirit came on me. About two months after, I guess, when I got up in front of the church, I confessed. And people were like, oh, you can't do that. Don't do that, man. People won't talk. That's why people won't talk anyway. They won't talk anyway. They won't, they won't talk. But you know what? When it comes out, when it comes out to the right people, they're going to pray for you. And there's power in prayer. There's lots of power in prayer. Don't have the attitude, oh, well, all I can do is pray for them. If you've got that kind of attitude, all you can do, well, all I can do is pray for them. Don't pray for me. <laughs> That's the kind of attitude you're going to have about prayer. Don't pray for me. Man, you ought to be excited to pray for them. That's a powerful thing, prayer. And that's not the only thing we can do for someone that we love or for ourselves is, is to pray. There's also a thing called fasting. There's a very powerful thing in that too. I've been fasting 14 hours a day now for the last three weeks. And I'm hungry. <laughs> One of the brothers told me the other day, I think you're losing some weight. Yeah. I'm not eating nothing. <laughs> Let me go wash my face. <laughs> I've enjoyed fasting. It's been an awesome thing, man. It's, it's just keep, it's, it keeps me meditating in the Word. I stay hungry, and I just stay meditating in the Word, and it helps me get through. It helps me get through. Look at here, y'all, man. There's freedom in Christ. If you've got an indoor and it don't matter what it is. It don't have to be the extent of putting a needle in your arm. It don't have to be the extent of committing adultery and fornication. It don't have to be the extent of murder or drunkenness 
a rival move. Just a little disobedience to God. You see him. And if you find yourself continuing to commit a sin over and over and over, and you just can't seem to shake it, you can shake it off tonight. And you walk free from it. How many of you can relate to that? I do the things. I really don't want to do. Come on, man. Everybody out there. I really got to do the things I really don't want to do. Instead of doing the things I don't want to do. God can set you free right now, man. It took about two months. It's about two months, maybe a month and a half. When I finally got up in front of the church and confessed to the whole church. I got a dope problem. I got a drug problem. I got a problem. And they began to pray for me. It may not happen right there and there. But it, it can. It can happen right now, right here. It might happen a month down the road. It might happen two months down the road. And all of a sudden the Spirit of God will come on you. Boom. And you'll be like, Whoa, what just happened? Tears began to flow and you just can't see nothing. You can't even operate a piece of equipment. It's like a little tongue toy. You gotta be able to operate it, man. That's what happened to me. I was out here in the middle of the passion. The Lord come on me, man. So you need to get up and you need to go. That's so why I got out my way. I went to my dad that day. And I said, Dad, man, I'm going out. I'm going out the little. I'm leaving. I'm going out the little. He said, well, go pack your stuff. I said, nah, I don't need to pack my stuff. Because where I'm going, God's going to be my own. I don't need nothing, man. He's going to take care of it all. I don't need nothing. And he took care of it all. He took care of it all. And he put me out here in this place. 80 years in the making to bring the gospel back into people. It needs to be here now. It needs to be here now. This guy right here, he's heard me talk about the Bible before. Over and over, I had a knowledge of it. I had that. But man, I thought he never heard nothing like this. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit, man. It's the Holy Spirit, y'all. I'm going to call on the prayer team. The prayer team's again. Y'all come on up. Y'all come up here. Look here. Here's a, here's a natural altar. God made that right there. We just put the carpet there for your knees. Look here. Look. They don't even hurt and they don't get dirty. <laughs> they don't hurt and they don't get dirty. Let me tell you something, man. If you've got an indwelling sin problem, let's get up here and let's pray. And let's pray through tonight. Let's don't leave this park till that thing is out of you. And you are free. For whom the Son has made free, He is free indeed. Y'all come on up here and y'all begin to pray. And if you feel like you don't need to pray, then maybe you can come up here and pray over some of these people. Everybody in these seats really ought to be able to pray. We have a sin issue. Where's our band? Y'all come on up here and pray. Y'all come up here and play, please. Man, y'all need, we need some prayer. I know I see some people, man, that I love. That I used to run with. I got family over here that I love. We need prayer. We need prayer, y'all. We can be free from that thing and go and sin no more. And go and sin no more. It's not that I don't have sin. I don't have to sin no more. See, God's still working on my life. I'm not perfect. But He's still cleaning out those spots and he's still ironing out those wrinkles. I still have things in my life that, that he's working on. I'm not perfect. But I don't commit those sins no more. I don't, I don't have to no more. Where's my band? How could I not play? <laughs> it's not my band. That's God's band. That's God's band. Come on, y'all, man. I know there's some people here that's been through the same things I've been through. Y'all need prayer. We all need prayer. Y'all come on up here, right? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your word that went forth this evening. Lord, we know that when your word goes forth, it does not return for And we know those hearts that you have been working on, that that seed has been planted. And it's going to produce some 30, some 60, and some 100 for you. We just give you glory and honor for this evening. We just praise you for who you are. You are glorious and you are wonderful. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that once again, your word is going forth in deep heart. Thank you that once again, salvation is coming in deep heart. It's out here in Crystal Old Texas. Your spirit is welcome here. Come and pour your spirit out. As the band begins to play, I just don't want to be praying.